Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here, out and about on this lovely Halloween day. Hope you're having a good time wherever you are around the world. Um, just to check in really on some work I've been doing this week. You'll remember we started the um, flushing process of the UES 591S's radiator and engine last week. Well, this week I decided to tackle the heater matrix that actually nestles in uh, in the middle of the dashboard in the heater uh, kind of box itself because obviously that's part of the system of cooling albeit it, it dissipates heat into the cabin of course and so I, I took my tools to that and uh, had a bit of a go at that and uh, let's show you the story of what happened. So here we are this is the second stage of the engine flush that I'm planning to do today and uh, the car had been through quite a bit of weather over the weekend with lots of rain and uh, torrents going around so it's time to uh, release the hood, uh, the cover that I've uh, bought for this car. It's only about 20 quid I think from Halfords but it's very good. It's just got the um, elasticated straps and the hooks I've found actually clip into the wheels quite nicely so it gives it good tension and keeps the weather out which is the main important thing. This car particularly as you've seen on previous videos leaks from the roof and the uh, tops of the windows um, given half a chance and with this torrential rain actually this has kept it bone dry inside so it's been really really nice to do until I can get to do the seals uh, maybe next year now. So um, on to the job again opening the old uh, car up and uh, popping the bonnet open to get to the uh, uh, the radiator and in particular today I'll be looking at the uh, the heater matrix we've um, avoided doing that directly so far we've flushed the radiator back flush as you saw before and uh, just opening the bonnet now you'll see my various uh, gizmos that are still there the um, water retainer and whatever uh, on the far side near the uh, top hose and um, yeah the engine's still looking nice but um, what I decided to do today was uh, to try and work on the hoses that go into the bulkhead and you'll see here there are in fact a couple of bulkheads um, if I just move the um, electrical HT wires out of the way and uh, that needs to be uh, replaced but here we go that's um, one of the pipes going into the heater matrix inside the car and it's fed from the top end of the right hand uh, block as you look at it from the front uh, from the water system and you can see there's a jubilee clip there holding it to that particular port so I need to release that Jubilee clip and the plan is to try and just flush this matrix inside the heater which isn't very big it's I don't know eight inches by I don't know four something like that with a, about an inch deep and um, so that's good the other pipe as you can see here my pointing comes uh, indirectly through to the water pump um, via metal bar metal pipe at the top of the engine and then onto the uh, water pump itself who so I just remove the um, air filter cover for a moment and the uh, hot air pipe that comes up with it then you'll see actually there's a UE there that comes into a fork on the that's the water pump casing just below the um, uh, the thermostat housing that uh, obviously gets the power from and sends the water through to the heater matrix that then warms the car with a fan inside your car so I need to get the one on the far side jubilee clip undone and um, just having a closer look at it it is a bit tricky because this car's got electronic ignition as you can see and I don't want to mess up these wires and uh, get in get them fouled or mess them up or interfere with the uh, electrics anyway and then I'm going to take um, well either one or two of the Jubilee clips off I'm probably going to opt for the one that opts that uh, fits to the water pump itself because then that gives me a little bit of flexibility in getting rid of the getting rid of the water now a top tip is that on the heater matrix controls themselves whether you're doing a system flush or actually an individual matrix heater flush as I'm doing here is to get the uh, switch over to hot because that way you're then accessing all the pipes inside and making sure that you're flushing the right pipes inside and not just short circuiting through the cold uh, pipes there. Um, you've got three switches you can see the main one we're interested in is the one on the top the slider that controls the temperature and I'll show you in just a minute what that does underneath the uh, dashboard and um, looking further underneath there's a bit of a strain this trying to get underneath the car um, and cricking your neck right up to the top in the distance there you can see two brass pipes uh, and those are the pipes coming in from the bulkhead that we were looking at just now and just behind that top one is what I'm interested in which is the valve 
that adjusts the heater, uh, or the heating rather, um, to the heater matrix, the flow of water basically, and there it is. You can see here it's controlled by a, a push rod and a Bowden cable that's attached to that lever I just showed you earlier on the fascia, and that should turn in its brass housing away from you and towards you. And uh, clearly, looking at a couple of the other levers on the fascia dashboard, you can see they all work. This one, however, isn't and appears to be stuck. I think it's quite a common problem that these get corroded inside and stuck. And there you've got a really good view of it. Um, a central screw holding the pivotal um, thing in place that needs to rotate. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, suffice to say, I managed to get it into a position where it was good enough. And um, so I decided to carry on with the flushing of the matrix with the valve half open, so at least I knew it was going to let water through. Um, the um, Jubilee clip there is released on that pipe on that side, and what I want to do today was hook that pipe out, get it up into the vertical as you can see here, and then my plan is to flush some water straight through that into the matrix um, using a funnel or similar into the pipe. So that was my plan. At the front of the engine, again, I decided to go for the uh, Jubilee clip that was the lowest one and also the most likely more flexible. I could actually hang that over the front of the engine so I'm not getting water all over the place. And I'll show you again a little technique that I devised to fix that. And uh, this one came off quite easily. Actually, I didn't need too much um, grunt to get it off. And you can see there it came off pretty easily. A little bit of brown muck and gunk inside, but um, otherwise seems okay. So there we go. That's uh, the front uh, from a different angle now off and ready and waiting to be flushed through from the top and blowing it just as I did at the other end, which you can't see your, me doing off camera. You'll see that initial little bits of uh, coolant coming out does look quite pink, does look quite healthy as the radiator flush did in the previous video. If you've not seen it, go back and have a look at that one. However, um, I wasn't happy with that. I just thought I'd better give it a better blast with some water. And to do that, it's obviously going to get a lot more messy. I came up with yet another scheme of involving a um, house hose pipe down to the ground and a bucket underneath in tandem with my other uh, gizmo I invented the other day, the musical instrument with the funnel, as you've just seen inside the engine bay there for when I did the top hose. So um, all plumbed in, I jubilee clipped the garden hose to that. I went through the lifting eye on the engine just to give it a little bit more stability. I managed to find a funnel in the garage and uh, doing this on my own without any help and also trying to film at the same time was an interesting challenge. Uh, but I did come up with some initiative in the end. I managed to bin dive and grab a, a milk, a used milk bottle from the, uh, the bin and hold the uh, whole system in place with the rather tired and worn out um, windscreen wiper blade, which I need to replace. But there it is, it's all set up. We've got the pipes coming into the bucket underneath. Right, um, I've got the funnel at the top. And now my plan is to uh, fill this with clean water and just flush through that heater matrix that's inside the car. As I say, it's not very big. The capacity, I don't think, is hardly anything really. So they're just to heat air as it's blown through. But nevertheless, it is like a radiator obviously, and uh, no doubt will gather sediment and, and whatever. So you can see here, slowly but surely, the water is percolating through, and I kept topping it up and just kept draining it through just to see what uh, muck and rubbish it would get out. Don't forget, we will be doing a proper rad flush for the whole system anyway. I've yet to do that. I'll probably do that in the next film. But for now, I'm trying to get the 80% of all the muck in there out. And you can see here, actually, it's starting to come through to me. quite clean. So initially pink, now clear. Um, I decided that I would actually give it a bit of oomph and blow it really hard. Um, so I'd fill it as far as I could and then blow hard um, through the system. And it was quite a, quite a, kind of quite interesting what a little bit of pressure did to the whole process because um, having kind of reflushed it again, um, making sure that uh, the, the water had gone through the pipe and empty. As soon as that had gone through, I then got onto it and blew into it. Um, just have a look down here as to how the color changed. It's quite interesting. What we were previously seeing was quite clear, actually is now a dirty brown. So there was a load of old crummy stuff inside there. So I think that's a bit of a good result. So happily, I just continued on uh, filling and blowing until 
really, at the end of the day, uh, we got back to some level of clarity of the water. Um, it's always going to be hard to get everything out. Um, I also took another look at this valve because, as I said earlier, I wanted to come back and just change the position to make sure it was fully open. So I fiddled about with that and went through the same process. And then I needed to put it all back together again um, so that the system could take the overall um, uh, engine flush that I'm going to do with the proper radiator cleaner in due course, which you'll see in the next video. So removing the pipe, pretty simple. Redid the um, Jubilee clips back up, made sure they're nice and tight and watertight, obviously. Uh, front and back of the engine means that uh, we're all good to go. And uh, the next stage in the film will be to, to refill. Yeah, just to point out, that's the Jubilee clip down there. It's quite tricky to get to, but if it's angled right and looking at you, you should be okay and be able to get in there. And um, whilst I was just re-putting stuff back together, I noticed on the air filter, I uh, hadn't seen this before, the bottom hose comes up into the air filter box, that actually that is heat controlled. So presumably that flap opens um, as the temperature gets hotter to let more hot air into the carburettors, which obviously is going to help the um, airflow and the capacity and the, the bang, basically. It'll take more fuel and be a better explosion. And it's driven by that little uh, pipe, metal pipe you can see on the top there. Um, I think there is some um, hot gases that come through from the engine via this little uh, neoprene pipe into this top kind of dish here. And they do then adjust the mechanism inside the metal filter box to open up that valve and then let more air in. And so really just before uh, I do the engine flush, uh, safety first, I, I put the filter back in and the lid back on just to make sure no water got in in the interim because again it's going to be another video another day to do the proper engine flush and therefore after that we should be back into business with uh, uh, new water being flushed through antifreeze put, being put in and set for the winter it's not an easy job this one but it's well worthwhile and uh, time to put the car to bed as it was uh, now getting dark but uh, i felt quite content i'd done a good job on the heater matrix and hopefully that will now sort it for uh, the big flush that I'm going to do in the next video. So uh, if you've not seen the previous one, please have a look. This one was specifically about the heater matrix. Next time I'll be looking at uh, flushing the whole system through with that cleaner and then finally putting the uh, antifreeze into the car. And here is the uh, Holtz speed flush that I bought from Halfords. It was £2.95, I think, something like that. It says it's suitable for all radiators and systems. And this is the stuff I'll be using next time. So uh, tune in next time and we'll uh, talk you through how to do this, uh, which again is a process. And make sure we have a tip-top, uh, lovely cooled stag and protected for winter at the end of it. Happy days. In the meantime, stay tuned for the next video about the actual air box itself, the heater box, which is well worth a watch, and also then a separate film about the thermostat, which again just sheds some light on that important piece too. And uh, we'll see you online on Harry the Stag very soon. Sorted stags! And don't forget to go to our website to get your free Harry the Stag badge of honour. Just sign up on the website and we'll send you one free of charge.